Hey, what is up guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toaster Bros. And today we're gonna be showing you guys how to actually build a PC from scratch. With all new parts, it's gonna be pretty awesome. But first, a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by GVG Mall, an online marketplace to gain access to some really awesome discounted game keys, and more specifically, Windows 10 licenses. And if you're interested, use the link down below and buy the Windows 10 Pro activation using our code TB20 to get 20% off. All you have to do to activate Windows 10 license is buy the key by using code TB20 and then throw the Windows 10 key into your Windows 10 activation on the system you wish to install it in and boom, you have activated Windows 10 and you no longer have to look at that horrible watermark in the bottom right corner. So thanks again to GVG Mall for sponsoring this video. Let's get right into the video, shall we? So you might be wondering who this random person is standing in the middle of this shot. This is Taylor. He's gonna be helping us out building his very first gaming PC. And it gave us a perfect opportunity to, well, teach you guys at home exactly how to build a PC step-by-step -step because it's been highly requested in a ton of our PC build guides. And since he has never built a computer before and he's actually interested in learning how to build a computer, this is a perfect opportunity. So how about we go ahead and talk about each individual part and exactly how it makes up this all new parts gaming PC. All right guys, so the processor that we picked out for him is a Ryzen 1600 AF. So this is basically a 2600 that's, I guess you could say, kind of before the rebranding. Um, so it's gonna pack all the power of second gen and everything, but it's only like $80. So it's a really good deal in that price point. So for the motherboard, we have over from Gigabyte a B450M DS3H. So we did pay a little bit more for this micro ATX board because, well, we needed it like ASAP. So we had to go on Amazon. Newegg does have them a little bit cheaper at the moment. Motherboard prices are always fluctuating because, you know, tariffs and whatnot. So you guys know that Ryzen loves really fast RAM. So we got 3000 megahertz at eight gig capacity. It's DDR4, of course, it's from Viper. And honestly, we'll get the job done. It's some of the cheaper RAM that you can get. Um, but really, you know, as long as it's 3000 plus, you're gonna have plenty of speed and capacity and it has plenty of upgrade path as well. And as for the graphics card, the most important part in a gaming PC build, we have the RX 570. Now, this is an all new parts build, so you can get this for around 100 bucks new. Uh, this is the XFX variant that actually looks really nice. But you know us, if you do wanna save a little bit of money, you can always go to the used route and pick up a 580 or 570, but you do run the risk of getting something that shows up defective. So going new is the best way to get warranties. And since this is a $450 build, you're actually getting a lot of performance for the money. So this is actually a good option, and I am really excited to see how it performs in the games that he plays. What games? Are you going to be playing on this, by the way? Uh, probably Rainbow Six Siege. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's going to be good for that. Overwatch and CSGO. Now, as for storage, we went with this ADATA 240 gigabyte SSD. 240 gigabytes is enough to get him off the ground. He can always throw in another hard drive in the future if he wants more storage, which we'll probably be doing that for him before we leave here. Uh, but 240 gigabytes of SSD, it's 2020. You really need to be rocking SSD in your PC because it's way faster than running a mechanical hard drive nowadays. And prices are so good right now, it's a no brainer. And as for the power supply, well, we went with our favorite thermal take, Smart series power supply. This is 430 watts. This is a pretty low power consumption system. This is more than enough for even some upgrades in the future. Um, and it's 80 plus certified. So it has some sort of, you know, goodness behind it. But uh, 430 watts would be more than enough to power this build and upgrades are really easy to do. And last but certainly not least, we have the Aerocool Cylon, a case that we've used many times. It is a really nice looking case with that beautiful open, uh, acrylic side panel, um, and this RGB wave that is on the front. Um, it's a very cost-effective case that has room for upgradability in the future, all the IO you could ever ask for, um, and it's really easy to build in, which is exactly what we wanted. So, you ready to build this thing? Let's do it. Let's do it. That's, the, that's how we want it. We want you to know nothing. <laughs> we want to seem smart, you know? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get out the motherboard, uh, put it on top of the box, and then we're going to put the processor and RAM in. Very simple to do, and we're going to actually have him do it himself. Go ahead, open right. up the box. So you're gonna uh, go ahead and get the motherboard out, just pull it out of the plastic wrap. You're not gonna need any of the other parts yet. Your first test is opening the package. <laughs> there you go. All right, so can you guess where the processor goes? Let's see if you, if you got this far. Uh, let's go right there. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, there it is. All right, so you got a, a bracket right there. You need to um, pull that bracket open, so you're gonna kind of just pull up into the side. There you go. There you go. All right, so now it's in the open position. You never want to put a processor in while that's closed because that's okay. the closed position. Um, here's your processor. You can take that out of the box. So one thing you're going to notice is that because this is an AMD processor, you have pins on the bottom of it, like tons of pins. And like you do not want to touch them because if they get bent, you're going to have to bend them back or it's going to break oh, and you. that's it. Like you have to buy a new one. Um, Intel, on the other hand, does not use pins. They actually have the pins laid out on this rather. Okay. So you're basically, you're going to grab it kind of from the top like and then you're gonna see a little arrow. 
So you see that arrow right here? Uh -huh. You see how there's an arrow on the processor? You're gonna line that arrow up with that and you're not gonna push, okay? You're just gonna just kinda, lay, just exactly, just kinda sit. lay it on there and you'll feel it drop into those uh, holes. Uh, uh, it's not quite in, so just kinda move it gently. There, there you go, go. perfect. All right, and so now you're just gonna Pull that push that, right. yeah, down. reverse order. It'll be a little bit harder now that it's putting pressure on the pins. So, all right, this is an extra step. Normally, this would come with thermal paste on it. So, like, literally, we would just bloop, just put it on, but gotcha. we got to reapply thermal paste. Oh, and also, we need to take these brackets off, too. We'll get you the really good. This is the 2019 edition thermal paste. Oh, it is can't afford the, We can't afford the 2020 yet. <laughs> can't afford 2020. Do they even have 2020 out? I don't know. They haven't sent it yet. They, they do. What does the thermal paste do? So... When you have metal on metal contact, there's always going to be really small, like, you know, microscopic tolerances. Gotcha. Like, it's not going to make perfect contact. So basically, this thermal paste acts as like a, a not a heat barrier, but it, it conducts the heat. It helps the heat okay. go through these fins, and then this fan dissipates the heat. If we were just to not put a cooler on that, that processor would probably last about a minute when you start the computer, and then wow. it, would, it would fry it. Some people, like, put way too much on. Some people put way too little. There's no, like, okay. right answer for this. So, I'm gonna get the cap off for you. Squeeze it, and then I'll tell you when I think that it's pretty good, and I'll get Matt's opinion on it. Right. So just keep going. I would say right about there. there. All right. Yeah. Matt and I agreed, yeah. so that, that that means it's good. Now ingrain that in your brain. That's the size that you right. should probably run with every All time. Right. For the cooler, it literally lines up with these. Okay. Um, I think we're gonna teach you today's cable management. This is very right. this is very near and dear to our hearts because this is important. So normally most people would just do this. They just put it on and then leave it like that, okay? okay. But when it's in your system, it's gonna look ugly like that. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do it like this. We're gonna basically hide the cable kind of under the screws. Okay. So I'm, I'm gonna kind of do this step a little bit for you. Uh, I'm only doing this because I don't wanna put your cable in the thermal paste okay. and get it all nasty looking. So I'm just gonna get the screws started and then I'll have you do it. And so, you know, you want to do opposite sides, like equal pressure. And so okay. then you can go ahead and plug this in there. You're going to have, have to plug in some other fans too. It can only go in one way, so you can't really mess it up. You see the little groove uh, yeah, that's on it? Yeah, 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 you just line that up. And just push it straight down. There you go. Yeah. Perfect. And you see how that looks a lot. And now we can even do this. Okay, gotcha. So now it's like the cable. Well, eventually, once the ram's in, you won't even see it. So if you want to go ahead and uh, screw these in, you'll have to push down because there's springs on them, oh, yeah. and they'll stop themselves. Once they're all, all the way tight, you won't be able to tighten it anymore. All right. All right. So good. now I'll show you one more step, and then Matt will take over, because we're basically just putting everything on the motherboard. If we wanted to, we could put this in the computer case, and like just the motherboard without anything and build it in the case, but almost no one does that, unless you're a okay. beginner, um, because it's it's harder to do. This okay. is like way easier to put everything together and then put it in the case. Okay. So if you wanna go ahead and uh, open your RAM. So the reason we're spacing them apart is if you look, it's labeled right here, uh, DDR4-1324. So you're running two sticks, which means you're gonna be doing dual channel. Dual channel's okay. faster than one stick. Gotcha. So you're gonna do um, the two gray ones here, and so you gotta pop the little brackets open before you put the um, sticks in. <laughs> All right, so you're gonna pop these brackets open. You kind of just push down on it. Right here? Yeah. Push down? Uh, like down and out, if that makes sense. That. There you go. And then do this, uh, the gray one, the other gray one. Yeah, there you go. And so now the easiest way to line these up is you see this little notch? It's gonna line up with this notch here. So what I kind of do is just hold it up to it and, and you'll see which right way it's here. supposed to go. Yeah, just oh, like pretend like you're putting it in and you'll see. Yeah, to me that looks like it's correct. All right, and so now you're gonna, this is the one thing that you actually push down pretty hard on, okay? Oh, okay. So you're gonna use both hands and push down, and those these will close, no, on the top. Oh, you're actually, top. yeah, they're right. spring-loaded, so it'll close it on its own. There you go. So now just do the same as the thing for the other one. Cool. That's another thing that a lot of uh, people mess up and the computer won't turn on, is if the RAM's not fully seated, like those okay. things don't automatically yeah. close, your computer won't display output, and you're gonna be like, oh, what's wrong? There you go, now if someone has to upgrade RAM, you know how to do it, that's all you gotta do. Okay, so the next step involves the case, more or less. So normally what I like to do from here is you would want to install the power supply. So if you can get that peeled open. So these side panels normally come off of just these thumb screws right here. You can use a screwdriver if you want to, but they're normally not on super tight, so you can just twist it. So what's your feeling about RGB? That's the real question. Do you like all the lights, the flashy lights? Yeah, definitely. Okay. We need to try one of those RGB strips then. 
the other okay. picture one. Um, and then in here, you know, if you didn't have us, this is an instructional guide, but you don't need that. <laughs> um, so what you got in here is all your screws, basically. Not sure why this is like protruding out, but okay, there we go. That's normally all your screws that you will need. Normally it is very intimidating to see all those screws, but it's not too bad. So then this is basically where all your power connectors come from. So you can basically take all that out. You'll need all that. You can take that out and take that cover off of it. We can install it into the case. So same thing for the back rear panel, two screws right here. Okay. Comes off like this. See, see if you can take a guess where the power supply goes. I actually really want you to do that. Not exactly. So what it, where it goes is it's just like a normal computer. You know how you would like plug up a computer and there'd be like the power cord and it'd be like on the bottom back of a computer. So basically what you're doing is. I had to get the other side. I don't know if it's, I was wrong. So like there, so what you'll do, I'll let you do it. Just slide it in there. And then what you're gonna do is line it up with these screw holes on the back. So all these cables plug in different things. You might uh, not have to use all the cables with a build. Um, okay. So this is just kind of like, what we like to call an octopus of cables. Okay. Um, then you just pull that all the way back there. Um, we're gonna pour all this out. And what you're gonna do is, he's better with naming screws than I am. I normally like just by memory remember screws, but what you're gonna wanna use is basically these screws right here. These are the uh, power supply thread. screws, they're coarse thread. Um, and they normally have, as you can tell, like this basically thicker head to it. Like that's basically what it is. So now you're gonna do is keep going until it until it's just like nice and snug, doesn't need to be super tight. There you go. And then basically you're gonna do the same thing with the same screws for these other points. Like there's one right there. You might have to push the power supply in, which I can help you with. So why'd you decide to uh, build your own rather than go into like a computer store and have one made? Oh, because of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, there we go. All right, now your power supply is basically installed. So the next step would be to kind of figure out where your cables are gonna go. So you can come around on this side, I'll help you out here. So normally most people would be like, okay, these cables, they have to plug into this at some point, we'll just leave them right here, but it doesn't look that clean. So what we like to do is take cables like this and there's these cutouts right here and they're designed to basically, so you can run stuff through the back of the board and then back out into the front. So in this case, you can probably run them right here. There's like a hole right up here that will take all those. So I mean like technically if you just wanted the PC to work, you could leave everything up here. Literally you put the motherboard in, the graphics are plug everything in and it's a finished PC, but we're not lazy. So, and we like the PCs to look good. So we run as many cables as we can behind the board. You want to hide everything that's ugly in the can't see through part and keep the things that look good in the can yeah. see through part. This is another thing that mother or power supply or case companies always do. You see how the cable comes off right here? Oh yeah. It, it ends up looking, it needs to be up, up here. Okay, they do that because they want you to run it straight to the motherboard, but then once again, you have another. Uh, yeah, so that, like that looks, see how that looks? It looks really weird. Yeah. So yeah. what we can do is, here you go, you can try this. Basically going to unscrew this fan. <laughs> He's gonna like this. So these, Imagine having to do this seven times. So these four right here, see those screws? Mm -hmm. Unscrew that and what we're gonna do is rotate the fan up so the cable okay. is coming out in the right direction. Yeah, you, you'll like that step. It's the most boring step, but for me, it's like the most exciting. Uh, yes, that should work, I think. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it will. Cool, that's in. All right, next up, IO shield, the thing that I cut my finger on all the time. And this is something that if you forget, you literally have to take the motherboard, the grab, you have to take everything out if you forget it, so. So as you see right here, this is where the opening is. This is basically where all your USB ports and everything are gonna be that you okay, can plug in. Yeah, yeah. So what you're gonna do is open that up. It's gonna go from the inside. So what you're oh, going okay. to do. Just like that. Yeah. Yeah, but then you wanna come in through this side and then basically pop it in the corners. Let's see if he can do this. And you kinda wanna push in from the sides. I say, Matt, if you wanna kinda like help push. Yeah. Oh, I oh, think wait. It, oh, I think you actually got one. Nope. Yeah, and then it, it likes to pop back out as you do it too. Oh, there you go. Um, what are, what are we there, doing? There you go, pro, that's it. <laughs> okay, so then what you wanna do is lay this computer down. So just grab the computer okay. and just lay it on its just back. throw it. Like this or the other way? That's fine, like right there, there you go. Just lay it down, it's on top of cables right now, but okay. don't really worry about that. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna guide this board to line up with these, th the, this uh, IO shield that you just put there. 
And those little gold things, they're, uh, the, the holes are called risers. And that's to keep the back of the motherboard from touching the case. Because if that motherboard touches the case, it'll short out. Okay. Mm, boom. You see how he kind of like, yeah, you have to go yeah, into yeah. angles and push yeah. down on things. It's weird. Sometimes they go red and sometimes they don't. And then, as there you can go. tell, there is one right there. There's a couple up here. And then basically you're going to screw those in. So Matt and I both take great pride in kale management, like more than we should. Um, but you get compliments on it. Like everybody's gonna look at this and go, wait, you built this? This is like professional. So normally you wouldn't do this, okay? You see these holes here? Mm -hmm. Those holes are literally for cable management, but we're not gonna use all those. We're gonna, we're gonna do a special technique here. So first off, you, we need to plug the CPU. This is what powers the CPU, that little rail right there. Okay. there the, here's the main cables. These are the ones like you have to have to power your computer. So here's the 24 pin, okay? This is like standard. Every computer has this. I mean, there's some exceptions, but every computer has this. Okay. Um, this is the CPU 8 pin, okay? okay? So these are like the two most essential ones if you don't have like a graphics card. Um, I'll show you, we'll show you that one later. That's like the last step. So we're gonna go ahead and actually put this up through here um, so that it's, it's easier to plug in, just like that. Um, and then the other thing that we're gonna have to do in a minute is there's gonna be some stuff we're gonna run behind the motherboard. This is unconventional, <laughs> you normally would not do it, but right. we're gonna make the computer look amazing by doing that. Hello, Editing Matt here. Uh, referring to this special technique that we're about to show you, well, most of the time we don't advise that you do this technique because one, there's a slight chance that you might short out your motherboard with the cables running behind the motherboard. But in most cases, if you're running like front IO headers and things like that, Perfectly fine, but be very careful if you decide to run things like six pin powers or 24 pin powers behind the motherboard to improve cable management. In most cases, if you're running just a front IO header and maybe a USB 3 cable, you're perfectly fine, but you do run the risk of cutting the cable slightly and having it exposed to the back of the motherboard causing some potential issues. So for those who are probably getting ready to type in the comment section very angrily that we recommend you do this, we know. Just thought I'd let you guys know that, but yeah. So if you don't mind, you think you can put the uh, motherboard back in again now? And I'll kind of help move these cables out of your way for you because they're gonna, they're gonna kind of be in the way by it. Just, just yeah, it, w it won't hurt anything. So I don't know if you can see how these work. This will be your first uh, clip connector. Right. This clip needs to go under this lip right here, okay? okay? So it, I'm not gonna lie, this isn't like super easy for your first time, but I think you can get it. Um, you got the IO shield. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know, he got the eyes showed like too quick, so. Wow, that, that works great, just like that. All right, so now if you wanna go ahead and line the motherboard back up, right. coarse thread, or fine thread, is gonna be your motherboard, likely okay. gonna be your motherboard. Once. Sometimes it's different. It might actually be the opposite, but we're gonna try it. So if you wanna take that, um, we're gonna try and find. Okay, so you see how we're lined up right now with it, you can see the hole there. Yep. So we're only gonna put one screw in, and the reason we're gonna do this is we're gonna go back and put the rest in, but because we wanna run these cables behind the motherboard, we need the motherboard to be able to move up and down. Like I said, normally you wouldn't do this. You're not gonna see many other people do this. We do it because it's like the best looking thing you can possibly do. So if you wanna take that screw um, and just screw it about halfway into that hole there. We're just doing that because we need to put the computer back up let me, does it feel like it's going in really easily or does it feel yes, weird? It's going in easily. Okay. A little bit more. That's probably good there. Back here um, and feed it through. So basically, all this stuff here is called your, your front panel stuff. Because I don't know if you can see it, but all these cables go up to here. So okay. your, I did not know this had S-D card Yeah, readers. no, that's what I'm saying. That's like is everything. that like a new thing? Yeah. Um, so, you know, USB 3, USB 2, audio ports, um, micro SD card readers. So uh, this is USB 3. The really big one here. Uh, this is in case you don't have USB 3 typically. Um, we'll plug it in anyways because there's a chance that um, it's for the USB 2, but so this one here is audio. The reason I can tell is because we've done so many of these. You see how a pin in the middle is kind of missing? Uh huh. And then USB is always going to be a missing one from the very end. Okay, gotcha. So USB will always see like that's USB. Mm -hmm. See, they look the same. Um, this is USB, looks the same. But then this one, like I said, is audio because it's missing the one there. Okay, it also gotcha. probably says audio on it, HD audio. Okay. All right, so you got the motherboard? Yep. It's okay if it comes out of place too. All right, so pull back just a little bit from the bottom. All right, that's good. Uh, I can't know. All right, so will you pull that for me and just kind of pull it through? Okay. All right, now I'm gonna feed a couple more things through, just do the same thing, just kind of pull them through once we get them. Let's go ahead and lay it back down. Kind of just hold it with me there. 
So now you can let go because it's not going anywhere. So we're gonna plug this stuff in now. A lot of times you don't need to do that, but now motherboards are really nice and they label stuff for you. You see how this is F audio? That means front audio. Okay. So can you find that HD audio one that I pointed out? So you're gonna uh, plug that into there. You'll see the missing pin, okay? okay. It can only go on one way. All right, so the rest of these are gonna be USB. So these two guys here are just USB. So just find, uh, you see we have front USB one and two. So you can use those two there. It doesn't matter which order. It doesn't, no. They're all the same. Okay, so now your USB 3 is gonna be different. So I don't know if you can see, it says USB 3.0 in there. Yep. Um, this one is gonna go in like this, kind of easy, but you'll probably have to push down a little bit on that as well. Yeah, oh okay, yeah, that's in there, I think. Is that in there? Yep. Uh, yeah, it looks like it is. Let me check and make sure. Yeah, it's in. Okay, so basically you're gonna see on this, I know he showed you already, but you have the power switch, reset switch, hard drive LED, and that's hard drive LED and this is power LED. So if you can look really close right there, sometimes you have to like shine a light. You see how there's the power LED, uh, okay. power LED. So what you're gonna do, these like, these come really close together like this. What you can do is you can actually peel them apart to make it a little bit easier oh, okay. if you want to. Um, and then for power LED, I'm just gonna show you an example. Right. If you can really look closely on the left, there's a plus mm -hmm. and on the right, there's a minus. Okay. And then you see, you match it up with these. There's a plus and then there's right. a minus. Right. The good news with these two is if you get any of them backwards or anything, it, it doesn't do anything. anything. It just literally won't like do what it's supposed to do. Oh, so like yeah. if you put plus and minus. And yeah, minus it won't, plus. it just won't work and so you just go, okay. I need so to if you wanna try it, the bottom one right there is the hard drive LED, which is this one. I got it. Okay, there we go. Yes. Oh, I had it right the first Yeah, you did, perfect. So then for the next ones, we got these right here. We'll go ahead and peel these apart so you have a little bit more to work with here. We have power switch and reset switch, which is literally the power switch to turn on the computer and the reset switch. If your power button doesn't turn on, most likely you have this wrong. Yeah. So what you'll see right here is those two pins right next to the ones we just plugged in. The top one's power switch and the bottom one's reset switch. Okay. So you can just look on the actual thing right there to see which one's which. Normally I like doing the bottom one first because it's easier to see the top afterwards, but All right, let me see. Awesome, yeah, you actually did it. Perfect. And that is your front panel header. So you just gotta be careful with these sometimes because like they are like really loose sometimes, like they'll come out if you move the board around and okay. like in this stage. So just keep an eye on it when you're moving it. But basically that is all your connectors down here. Um, probably should run a SATA since we're doing storage. Basically, it'll come with two of them. It will be in your motherboard box. But what it is, is it basically plugs to your storage drive, which is this right here. So that connector will go right here. Okay. And then this plugs directly into the SATA ports that are right here. So basically labeled SATA. So the best thing to do is, as you can see, if you can come around this side, in order, it will say zero, one, and two. Okay. So you normally want to start on zero. So it's like zero, one, two. Okay. So you'll take this connector then go on the other, normally flip it around, it'll work that way, boom, clicks cool. in. And then this one, what we'll do is we'll run back behind the board eventually and plug it in to this. And then this is where you install your operating system, all your games and save everything on it. Actually, this time I'll have you do it. So I'm gonna kind of hold the motherboard in for you. Okay. Um, you see all these cables? You're gonna kind of pull those through and I'll tell you when to stop. Here, I'll lift back a little bit. All right, keep going with that one. All right, that's about good there. Uh, and then just the this one here. I don't know if you can see me pulling it. Right here? Yep. Yes. All right. All right, so now I'm gonna lay it back down. We shouldn't need to unscrew it again. This should be the last time we need to uh, yeah. put a screw in. So you see how this looks like way better now? Oh yeah. We can kind of tuck some of these. Yeah, definitely. Um, we can also use zip ties later on. Uh, all right, and we're, we'll go back through and put the rest of the screws in just a minute. The only reason we're not gonna do it just yet is just in case we forgot something, it'll just be as simple as taking one screw out rather than having to unscrew you know, every single uh, hole there. Let's go ahead and run your 24 pin. So uh, that's going to be this giant one here. You're going to grab that from me. Um, I would put it through this one up here. And then when you do it, also let's. Uh, yeah. You can twist it like that. That works. Yeah, it won't hurt it. <laughs> You're fine. Cable just snaps in half. Yeah. I'd be like, well, normally it wouldn't. You only have to pr press pretty hard. Yeah, on this that. one's like the worst one. You have to like really. It'll definitely click in though. Is that in? Uh, can yeah, it is actually. Sweet. It just didn't, sometimes it clicks, sometimes it doesn't. Um, and then we need an LED strip because we're gonna make this PC look really cool. So I don't, you didn't grab one, did you? No, I didn't. Go okay. ahead. I'll grab one real quick. 
Um, so we're gonna put it uh, right up here, but we're gonna use the, the sticky on it so it doesn't fall on you. There's no wrong or right way to do this. There's just it's better just a looking light. ways. Stick it wherever you want the light to come from. And okay. Yeah, and it. also the cable too. We're gonna make it to where the cable will route pretty easy. So we're gonna do this way so I can run it with these cables over here okay. and make it look kind of natural. Right. And then I'm gonna run this up top through here pull the slack there and it'll be like we never even added it. You don't even really know that there is an RGB strip until you turn it on. All right, and so now we're just gonna plug in a few things. We'll turn it towards the light so Matt's camera can see it. There's about three different main connectors back here that we're gonna be using. So one thing I like to do is kind of sort out what you're gonna need. So we don't need all of these. Um, the reason being you don't have that many things to plug in. So we're gonna need um, two of these and we're gonna need one or two of these as well. So this is called SATA. Every new hard drive and SSD will use SATA ports. They don't use, uh, back in the day, used Molex, but now the only things that use Molex are like weird things like RGB strips. Um, this fan is the option to use Molex. Other than that though, that's the only time Molex is really used anymore. It's the worst connector ever. Also. Yeah, it is. It <laughs> sucks putting them in. Um, you wanna plug these in though. You, 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 have to, you have to feel the pain of plugging these in. You gotta see how fun it is. Alright, so which one do I take? Uh, so just any of these. I would use like the, the longest one, which yeah. would be like... Yeah, this one that you, that you had will work fine. Like so it's gonna be the other side. That's like the, the female end, or the male end. I don't remember which one's which. <laughs> it's a good line. Oh, I think he actually actually it was not too bad. Yeah. So the reason that adding a hard drive in is, is okay in this case is because Windows is going to be on the SSD. You want the SSD, you know, since it's fast, to run Windows so that everything you do is fast. If you put Windows in the hard drive, everything you do is going to be super slow and it's going to suck. Okay. But running Windows on this and then using this as a storage drive, like for games and stuff, mm -hmm. you'll never notice the difference of speed because you're, the stuff, the Windows is on here running off okay. of this. So you're going to uh, take, I would take the top bay out, you just squeeze those two together there and pull out. There you go. Yeah, it's, and you, you just take it all the way out. You'll put the hard drive in and then put it back in. Um, so you're gonna have to flip it, the hard drive, well, or that, you know, you can do it either way. Um, and then actually, here, let me see this I think those quick, the ones I can just done. like bend. Yeah, so you, this one's weird. You gotta do this, kind of pull it out. Um, now flip the hard drive over. You want the ports to face out this way. So like this. Yeah, sorry, I'm making this complicated. Yeah, like that. <laughs> yeah. And now just kind of set it down in there. And do you see these, those little pegs there? Um, those are gonna go in the holes when you push the cage back okay. together. So just, yeah, give it a good firm push and it should lock in. All right, so now go ahead and slide it back into there. Perfect. See, this, th this is nice. Back in the day, they didn't, that was, that's one thing that has changed from when Matt and I used to do these. They did not have these nice bays. You had to like screw in the hard drives oh, and gotcha. it was a hassle. So now we're gonna go ahead and plug in the hard drive. So uh, like, as I said before, hard drive's gonna use SATA. So you see how you have a, a big port and a little port. So the big port's gonna be this guy. That's the power for the hard drive to make the platter spin. Yeah. Um, the other one, this one here is for the data. That's what actually reads and puts it to the motherboard. Okay. You have to have both of them plugged in or you know, it won't work. So uh, I'll let you plug these in. Um, it's just like you did the motherboard, you know, same concept. So look for the little L on there and you'll line that up. Might be backwards right now though. All right. All right. And now uh, same thing with this. Right. You gotta find the L again and then just uh, plug it in. Yeah. Oh, we got this too. Um, this is also SATA if you wanna plug that in just to one of these is fine. Oh, okay. This is for this RGB strip up front. Oh, okay. There you go. Okay, um, yeah, so we'll do the SSD now if you wanna go ahead and, uh, you'll probably need scissors for that. Okay, so uh, SSD, this one actually has mounting for it, which is pretty nice. A lot of times they don't. Um, SSDs, the cool part about these is there's no moving parts, okay? An SSD is kind of like a USB thumb drive. You can carry it around with you, do whatever with it. So um, a hard drive, you see how it's really nicely mounted and like it's not touching anything? That's because yeah. hard drives are delicate. They have, a, there literally is a, a spinning disc inside center. There's actually one right here we can show the camera. Um, this is a hard drive opened up. So there's a, a disc that spins really fast, about 7,200 RPM. Um, and then there would normally be a spindle out here that basically reads this disk. That's literally how all your information is stored. But this, on the other hand, no moving parts. So with this, like if we were to bump it too hard or we were to accidentally shock it with our fingers, there's a good chance that this would be dead and your data would be gone. Um, but with that, 
Those are shock proof, they're uh, dust proof, they're like basically everything proof, or resistant at least. Um, so for this one, we're just gonna mount it here, but a lot of times we'll just use sticky, even like adhesive, you know, and mount it somewhere else. But this actually has mounting for it. So uh, this one's gonna take the fine, the fine threaded screws, so these guys here. Um, what I would also do, let's go ahead and plug it in first. So that's going to SATA port one, because that's gonna be like our secondary drive. And then this one here, um, if you wanna plug that in. The only reason I'm doing it before we screw it in is because when you screw it in, it's gonna be like that. It'll okay. get really hard to plug in. So kinda of hold it while you do it or else it's gonna fall out. And I'll go ahead and run it to the motherboard for you. All right, um, and then if you wanna run another SATA power to it. All right, um, so now if you wanna go ahead and uh, screw that in. I would just do two screws personally because there's, you know, I don't really need all four. And then I would just do the other top one because these ones are just annoying okay. to get to. Yeah, flip the whole thing around. All right, looks good. Yeah. All right, so um, that's basically, see, I'm not missing anything besides the graphics card, right? Yeah, just graphics card. All right, so that's about everything besides the graphics card, so. Probably screw in the motherboard, get the graphics card in, and then you can and then I'll show help cable with cable management. management. One up here. This one might be hard to get to. You can try to get to that one in the top left corner. Okay. If not, I can try to. And then there's one right here. Okay. And then you're going to use the same screws that you used before for this one, and just kind of go at it. Perfect. I'll get this one, maybe. <laughs> Why'd you get the shortest screwdriver you could find? <laughs> because it's like. So I think he's using the, he's using the second one. longest one. Yeah. All right, now that's screwed in. Now the motherboard is basically in, as long as there's no issues right here. Yep, that's all good. Um, the next step would be the most important part of a gaming computer, the graphics card. So if you want to go ahead and take that out of that bag. Unsheath it. Unsheath it. You can kind of get an idea of how it works, basically. See if you can guess where that goes. Not exactly, you're close, <laughs> sorta. Of. Uh, so what you're gonna do is, it's kinda weird. Basically this slot right here, you see that you can pull this part off right there. It's like a cover. Okay. It wants to come off. It's like a yeah. glove. That little slot right there is gonna go in always, in most situations, the topmost one of these slots right here. Yeah. So how it's gonna work is if you come over to this side, you'll see that there's two screws right here. This is kind of a new thing that they've been doing. Normally, if like older cases won't have this cover, but it's yeah. just kind of like to hide some of like the stuff right here to make it look a little nicer. Um, what you're gonna do, favorite thing ever, unscrew these two screws. Oh, yeah. You'll learn that PC building is a majority of unscrewing things and putting it back together. When you get like a shoulder rake for videos like this. There you go, perfect. Okay, now, what you can do is you can go ahead and make sure normally like some cards won't come like this, but just peel those things off. Like they're just protective covers. Normally it's kind of satisfying to peel those off. Mm -hmm. And then the one on this side too, there's one that's wrapping that cooling. Keep them on. Okay, so you're gonna see on the back, these are the video out ports. That's basically what you're gonna be plugging your monitor into to basically get video out. Um, so what you're gonna do is you'll see that there's these little holes on this side all the way down. Basically it's so these ports can come out here. So what you're gonna do is, the best way to test it is to take the card and then you'll line it up with this slot right here. Mm -hmm. And then you can tell which ones you need to pop out because you see this is like a two lane card, so there's two slots. So then basically, these are the two that you need to pop out. So what you're gonna do is in cheaper cases, you honestly can just literally move, wiggle it back and forth until it comes out, if that makes sense. It's like attached to this piece. So I'll do the first one for you, I'll show you. See how it's like on here like this? Yeah. Just wiggle it. Cheap cases. Boom, cheap case. So then same thing for this one right here. Yeah, it takes a lot of wiggling back and forth. Yeah, it's just wiggling. Really. You see it'll get looser and looser and then boom. Yeah. All right, now you can install the graphics card. So what you wanna do is hold it like this and you're going to line up that slot with that slot right there. All right, now that I have it lined up, it goes in through right here. See how it's coming out right there? And then it should, as long as it's lined up properly, you should be able to just push down on it now, just like the RAM, and it'll click in. The graphics card is a lot more satisfying when you get it to go in. There, so that's that. And then what you're gonna do is take this little piece that you just took off, attach it back here, 
and then you're going to screw in probably, let's see, where is that at? The second and the third. So these two right here. Yep, second and the third. So some graphics cards have this power connector right here. This is basically extra power for it. Some older cards or like lower power cards or cheaper cards won't come with one. So sometimes you don't have to plug this in. But in this case, you are gonna use what is basically this connector right here. Sometimes it's labeled as like PCI or something like that. So what you can do is we'll run it right here just to keep it clean because Jackson will probably mess with the cable management here in a little bit. So what you'll do is you're going to take this connector and plug it in the same way as the other ones. So you're gonna hold it, I'll do it like that, hold it like that, kind of squeeze it tight, and then you can plug it in now. Shouldn't be a problem. You should get the same click. Sometimes. That click. Yeah, sometimes just need to be a little bit harder. Like sometimes excessive yeah. force. Yeah. yeah, sometimes it does. Okay. So that's good. Perfect. You might need to tighten the screws a little bit more. So this would be the point right now. That should be good there. Yeah, this is the point right now where your PC is basically put together. Like you so, could turn it on right now. So you, you could turn to. it on and it would turn on as long as we didn't screw anything up. But uh, this is where Jackson's going to go ahead and show you how to clean it up a little bit. Mainly it's going to be him cleaning it up because it's like it's a lot yeah, of extra I stuff. Say, I don't, don't want to make you do all this because it'll, it'll take like yeah. hours. Because a lot of this is just self-preference. One thing I don't like is this. You know, that's, yeah. just, that's just ugly. So we're going to hide uh, that. We'll put a couple zip ties on this. Yeah, a computer only looks as good as this cable management. You know, if you do want to just cable management and good, then the computer looks like junk. Which a lot of this, you're like, you're not even going to see most of this stuff. But if you ever go to upgrade your PC one day, you're going to be kind of glad that you decently cable manage stuff because it makes things easier to find. Obviously, if you do a ton of cable management, it makes things a little bit harder because you have to go through and uh, undo everything. That's why I'm not going to go crazy with this. Another thing too is like, if I was to do this, you would see these through the front. So that's another reason why we're kind of we're gonna try and like tie stuff the best okay. we can so that you don't see certain things. Um, it, whatever we, is long enough, we're gonna put under the hard drive into the other cage basically. And like literally it's just a simple shoving it. I mean, you don't wanna be too brutal cause you might unplug things that you don't wanna unplug. Right. Uh, but for the most part, you can just shove everything in there. You have a, a main power switch. So it's yeah. binary one and zero, one means on. So just flip that. And then the power button is right up there. The moment of truth, will it turn on? Oh, okay, nice. Let's change the RGB. Here we go. All right, so now it's on a, f a smooth RGB. And we'll change the front as well. That's the button see up this here. Thing right here. Yeah. So just for us, you can make it whatever the heck you want later on, but we're just going to... Oh, hold on. We had it. We're just going to make it smooth RGB to match the inside. Okay. By the way, the graphics card fans, you'll notice that they sometimes spin, sometimes don't. When okay. you start playing a game, they'll spin, but these are fans that turn on and off based on the heat. They do that to reduce um, energy, you know, the energy efficient fans. But yeah, looks good. Everything appears to be working. All right, guys, so now that we have the system put together, we're just gonna run through a couple of games real quick just to show you what this system is capable of doing. We have good old Rainbow Six Siege here on high settings. We're gonna run the built-in benchmark and just see exactly what kind of numbers we can get. So basically what it's gonna do is like fly through different places in Rainbow Six and show like different demanding things. You'll, you'll see it, but. Uh, yeah, I've seen a few other So, videos. yeah. So this is basically Rainbow Six. Right now this thing's getting well over 160 FPS, which is more than what you need for a system like this. Um, basically running through the benchmark. Um, you can tell MS Afterburner seems to be frozen at 0% for RX 570, don't know why, but definitely using the GPU right now, but well over 100 FPS. You could definitely run high refresh rate if you wanted to with this setup. Um, it looks really nice um, and yeah, can't complain. 8 gigs of RAM more than enough still for a game like this um, and you can easily upgrade that too at some point if it becomes a problem. Um, as you can tell, this is super smooth. And then there we go. So we got an average of 169, minimum of 121, and a max of 231, which is really cool. All right, guys, so the next game we're going to test is CSGO. This is definitely a game you'll most likely be playing with this setup. This game, this PC is really targeted for like eSports at around 450 bucks with all new parts. It's actually a really good value. We're most likely going to see well over 100 FPS once we load into the map, but we're going to run into a deathmatch mode just to kind of get a little bit of an example of what kind of performance we can expect. And as we're in the game right now, we are at around 170-ish FPS, which is really good, pretty solid. Um, close to 200 FPS, actually. If we lower some settings, we'll probably get a constant 200. Um, and now we can try to run around and experience CSGO.
Oh man. I think it said B. So when you shoot, oh. you want to stop moving or else it'll... If you should spawn with the op now. Yeah. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> so he's to your left. Oh man. That was, that was all right guys, so you just saw some really awesome benchmarks with our buddy over here actually playing most of the games. So he's already gaming before he even took the PC from the office. Um, but I, I think that he really likes it. You like it, right? Yeah. Okay. But yeah, overall, this configuration for $450 is really awesome. That 1600 is a great value right now, 85 bucks. The RX 570 is still a great card for 1080p gaming, and you can pretty much play whatever he wants with this thing without any problems. So I think overall, this was a very successful build. And if you're interested in buying all the parts for this build, link down below. Uh, all those links are affiliate links. If you do buy using those links, it will help support the channel. So do keep that in mind. But as always, you know, if you want to buy this build and follow the step-by-step -step guide, which if you guys like that, let us know down below. You can do that and also support the channel. So we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And of course, we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye. I'm off with this.